Grumble, grumble. Hey everyone, it's the Grumpy Meeple, and we are back to Tanaris Adventures. This time we're going to be starting the gameplay for quest number two. Know your enemy. <laughs> Let's uh, get set up here. Very excited to see what we have in store. During the invasion of Fisherman's Wharf, the Iron Hand destroyed a portal that is connected with the rest of the Imperial Grid. Interrupt a powerful ritual of Kemet Lords trying to reconstitute it. Primary objective, destroy all mana shields projecting, protecting the Kemet Lords. Read 2.5. If you lose, try again. The extra challenge, kill a specter before destroying Gulag's mana shield. Interesting. Rule explanation. After the campaign properly begins, you'll gain two additional loot cards if you do the extra challenge and win the quest. Note, no extra res resources will be granted for doing the extra challenge in this introduction, but try to keep this challenge in mind and see if you can do it. You'll want to accomplish extra challenges in every quest after this one. And then we've got a bunch of special rules. Kemet Lords and Mana Shield. Archer, Necromancer, Warrior, and Spy Figures. Red Boss Token. A powerful Mana Shield protects those performing the ritual. Besides attacking it directly, you may use skills to deplete the mana from your surroundings. Archer, Necromancer, Warrior, and Spy. Okay, so th these are the miscellaneous figures that they reference here in the directions. So we might as well... We might as well get those figures out. Although, it'd be nice if because they don't reference a, a specific card. I kind of don't know what figure I'm supposed to use, but let's take a look and let's get those out because we definitely want to be able to differentiate between those and the, the guys that we're actually in combat with. So we've got four figures to represent those four characters in our incredible 3D dungeon, which I have redesigned since the last video i got a comment on facebook somebody said something to the effect of uh with all the tables it kind of looks like an office space and i took a look at it and i said you know what they're right <laughs> so i've got some nice altars some wood piles and stuff to represent the the barriers um and just to mix things up, I threw a couple of these terrain pieces down to represent more spiked slash damage areas um, so that the final room kind of pops a little bit more. All right, so we have figures here. C and S, Y and Z, B and G. One archer, one berserker, one gulag, one necromancer, one spy, and one warrior. Okay. For now, all we need is C and S, whoever the hell that's supposed to be. The archer figure and the necromancer. Okay. So for now, at least. All right. Kemet Lords cannot be moved and take no turns. A single mana shield protects two Kemet Lords. Put the red boss token on 70 to represent its HP. Okay. I still don't have my board. Haven't gotten any kind of shipping notification. Could be months. So I'm still just like writing this stuff down. So I'll write down... All right. 
Whenever you your attack targets a Kemet Lord, roll against the Mana Shield's dis defense stat, which is two. Whenever you deal damage to a Kemet Lord, reduce reduce the mana shield's HP. Okay, yeah, so you're reducing the 70 HP instead of their individual HP. Whenever a hero uses a skill, the mana shield takes 10 damage. Interesting. Very clever design, too. They're trying to get you to use your skill your skill board. So they're saying, hey, if you use your skills, you'll kill these guys way faster. Very smart. R. If there are Kemet Lords on the grid, a hero takes five damage. Oh, okay. So they're kind of constantly doing damage. Very interesting. And you can see you don't spawn because they have the colored circles. You don't spawn these other ones until you open those rooms. So for right now, we just have the two. Crystal deposits, the barrel figures. Bup, bup. You can, as a, um, what do they call that? As a interact action, yeah. As an interact action, you can remove the barrel. Each hero gains one mana. Ooh, very cool. All right, and then in the events, the initial setup, place all heroes on the stair. Each may reassign, reassign two skill tokens. I've already done that. Place the Reaper, Spectre, and Spectres 93 and 94. That's done. Place the Kemet Lords, Sicilroy, the Archer. And Solneritha, two powerful Kemet Lords to face. They are busy with their ritual. Then, after reading the special rules, read 2.1. Okay, then after reading the special rules, read 2.1 in the journal. Let us flip to Te Journal. Yeah, we're looking for page two twenty one. This journal is gigantic and awesome. Obviously. <clears throat> All right. One, for this quest, we'll ask you to check for facts that impact the circumstances of your game. If you have the following, apply the following. If you have slot one, slot two, You've successfully neutralized troops allocated near the site of the ritual without raising an alarm. Enemies on site are more distracted. The effects always have a description of what you have done and its consequences in the adventure to justify having placed a fatigue cube on slot one of the hit point track. Okay. What's up? I just wonder if you have to do that. Yeah, Can can you just give me like 10 minutes? All right, thanks. All right, the Reaper and the Spectre gain three distracted tokens each. All right. Distracted tokens.
and that's the Red Reaper and the Green Scepter. Um, I don't think I have a Green Scepter right now. print I see 94 blue is there even a green there is hmm. I wonder if it's meant to be Okay, that's really confusing. Again, it might be in that stupid thing. I don't have it. That's why you put it in the box. If you can. Okay, maybe, maybe if I just read through the event, it'll reveal what color these motherfuckers are. Definitely not. Um, I'm going to assume it's the guys in the first room. So they're both distracted. Gain three distracted tokens each. So that's another thing that's a little bit confusing. The distracted token has the number three on it. So I assume they're distracted three. But the wording of that specifically says gain three tokens each. And so, I guess they're distracted nine. Why it's these particular guys who got distracted? Unclear. All right. Mark the fact Warfers saved. This means that if you have a cube on slot two, you have gained this fact. Okay, I didn't get that one. Quest one, Fisherman's Wharf. Your previous fight against the Kemet makes their forces weaker here. Remove the Spectre 93 from the board. Wow. So he goes away. So this is showing us that the choices you make and the actions you take have a real impact on the game, not kind of a theoretical impact or like a loose, like long-term impact, like, oh, your town prosperity went up or whatever. Um, this is like, dude, you have less shit to fight now. Um, in the log, check if the star-shaped slot next to the name of Quest 1 is marked filled. If it is, apply the consequences described in bold italics. We know it is marked as you are required to win Quest 1 in the campaign's introduction. Okay. Read Chapter 12 of the rulebook, Step 2, Apply Modifications, Journal Quest Chapter. Facts. No need to read the Team Token and Kemet Hunt sections yet. This time we're taking it a bit easy on you, but expect your future decisions to heavily impact the circumstances surrounding your game for better or worse. Okay, so we need to read the rule book, chapter 12. My modifications. Ah, here we go. 
Step two, apply modifications, journal close. After you've assembled the map and read the special rules, you're almost ready to take the first turn. You just need to quickly check the journal as your past actions and adventure decisions may have an impact on the situation on the board. This is your journey through components before the fight begins. Yeah. So it's showing you here like the little kind of map. You're gonna start with an adventure card. It's gonna take you to the journal, take you to the quest guard guide, which is gonna take you to the quest chapter for the journal. As soon as you open a quest chapter in the journal, you will see a table like this. As you can see, many things have been introduced above. We need to talk about facts, team tokens, and combat health. Facts. Your adventure decisions and quests played some sometimes change the facts of your of the story. This creates long-lasting consequences that impact the future of your campaign. You gain a fact and register it in the fact log whenever the journal instructs you to mark a fact. All facts are alphabetically listed in the log, and whenever the name of a fact appeared, it is in bold green, followed by fact. Be careful about sentences such as, if you have, or if you have marked. You're not earning these facts, instead you must check whether you have marked them in the past. If you're playing the campaign's introduction, continue reading section 2 of the journal. And finally, section 2 of the journal, know your enemy... Quest 2, Know Your Enemy Begins Now. Take the first turn. Fuck yeah! <laughs> and so, next up we will indeed take the first turn. All right, everyone, and we are back, and it is time to start playing Arena the Contest. We are going to start with the hero turn. Just to refresh our memory. All right, nothing else we need to do. No, we're good. It's all set up. It's all good. It's all good. Right now we're just trying to kill these enemies and the Kemet Lords. Kemet Lords don't take turns, can't be moved. So they're basically focused on their ritual. Whenever you attack a target with, whenever attack tar targets a Kemet ro Lord, roll against the mana shields, defense stat, which is two. Whenever a hero uses a skill, the mana shield takes 10 damage. If there are Kemet Lords on the grid, a hero takes five damage. Or just typically like an event. If there are Kemet Lords on the grid, a hero takes five damage. When? Why? How? <laughs> Doesn't really seem to get into that, does it? It's unfortunate. Um, yeah, those are usually like triggers. really not very clear about what the fuck that means. Should I take that to mean that they take five damage at if they're 
I guess it's if you you take a turn and there's a Kemet Lord on the grid, you take five damage. I mean, that's the only way I can read that, which means we got to really burn those guys down and focus on them. It's just not a problem. All right, so who's going to start us out? So I need to burn that shield down, which means I need heavy hitting single target attacks. They could hit multiple targets, but heavy hitting attacks that do a lot of damage. And anything that generates mana, which will allow me to use my skills would be super valuable as well. And I want to say that there is something along those lines. Cursed Bolt, eight damage. Eight squares, one enemy, 10 damage. Target is cursed. Bleeding. Fatal Kiss, 8 squares, 9 damage plus effect. Another enemy takes damage equal to half your natural roll. Right. Target is in for you. First hit of your turn. A hero charges two skill tokens. And mana return. Yeah, his effect. Brutaling. Brutality from the Brute. No allies within one of the target. First hit of your turn, the effect is gain one mana, move to an ally. I knew there was something that could generate some mana. All right, so I'm gonna start out by activating Le Brut. He has a movement of six and I want him, I think I want him to do, yeah, I'm just gonna do the perfect blow. It's got a range of two squares benefit plus three to attack roll. So he's going to move in range to use that, which is going to be one, two, three, four. Hmm. You know, the problem with that is if he does that ranged attack, he's going to trigger reaction. No, because his spears still count as melee attacks. My bad. Yeah, so he's going to move right there, and then he is going to do perfect blow. Two squares, one enemy. He gets a plus three to his attack roll. He rolls a 10. Mana Shield has 70 hit points and two defense. So the Mana Shield takes 11 damage. Bring it down to 59. uses his perfect blow but he takes five damage because 
because the every every whatever the mana shield is around the Kemet Lords are around you take damage so um the hell is this guy's name yeah Robitus is down to 60 and his special triggers no ally is within one of the target he gains a mana and he gets to move an ally too I think he will move. <coughs> yeah, she's not the quickest. He will move her. And that's it for his turn. Because the Kemet Lords don't have an enemy card. They're not they're not enemies. They don't react. So it just kind of keeps going on my turns, although I have to re remember that. If I don't attack these guys, then they will be the, st the status is unprovoked, right? So they'll have that extra damage. So I definitely, you know, maybe don't want to sit on that. I'd rather target one of them with an ability that hits multiple targets and then I can do some splash damage. As long as the enemy is the primary target, then that's the one that will react. So, thinking about that, let's see here. What have we got? The Sword of Sigils, two squares, one enemy, 11 damage, plus effects. You are protected, three. An ally swaps place with an enemy or both, if both are within five of you. That's really interesting. Don't know that she can take advantage of that right now though that wouldn't be like a huge game changer anyways dimensional strike one square one enemy you move two ignoring terrain oh yeah this sounds fantastic effect deal plus two damage per other combatant within one of you Can't quite leverage that. <coughs> but she can still get some value out of that. She's got a movement of movement of five. But this does give her an extra two. Hmm. Her there without triggering a reaction would be a problem. Maybe let's try one of our range. Let's try, let's try out Yemi. Let's see what she's got. Let's see what she's packing. Fatal Kiss, eight squares, one enemy, nine damage plus effect. Another enemy takes damage equal to half your natural. Lol. Mind Strike, eight squares, two enemies, six damage per hit plus the effect is move one, all enemies hit. This will trigger both of them, though. It's a little dangerous. Blood Petals, 8 squares, 1 enemy, 11 damage, plus effect. Effect, move 1, the target. If you rolled an even natural number, the target is bleeding, too. It's got some value to it. And then the Cursed Bolt, 8 squares, 1 enemy, 10 damage, plus effect. Target is cursed. Target rolls twice and chooses the worst result. Hmm. And these guys are targeting. What do we got here? Hero with the most HP and the hero that is farthest away. Then 
of five. So, I think I, I think, I think I want to trap this red guy in particular. him to have a target what I'm trying to do is I want to get him into a position where he has to move away to get to the target which he's in right now yeah I guess I'll do that so Yemi is actually going to target him nope him with a ranged attack And we will see if we can. Yeah, that should work. Because then when he retaliates, the nearest farthest target will be her. And he'll come to her, likely triggering either damage from him or from the spikes. Okay, that's beautiful. Let's do that. Yeah, Curse Bolt. <clears throat> this guy has a defense of eight. Ooh. Curse Bolt, 8 squares, 1 enemy, 10 damage plus effect. Yummy yeah, takes 5 hit points because the Kemet Lords are still hanging around. Taking her down to 55. She's going to do Mind Strike instead. <laughs> six squares, two enemies, six damage per hit. Yeah. So that she can hit Bluey and the Kemet Lords. To roll twice. She needs an eight or better. And she will focus. And she's not moving. So that means that she gets plus three to her roll. Five, six, seven, eight. Oh, he's exposed, so he's minus three to his defense but same difference but five hits so he hits bluey and he hits the mana shield but just barely on both is a level three. Holy mother of... Wow. So he just goes down to 89. Oh my god, he's powerful. The shield takes six damage. Herodotus spends his ability cube to play
Frenzy. He pays five hit points. To hit the Kemet Lord shield for seven. Plus 10 for using a skill. takes it down to 43 she has the ability to move an enemy hit I'd rather he trigger the reaction than take the spike damage. And that's it for her activation. The shield is getting wailed on. but she doesn't trigger her she doesn't trigger her special ability which I really needed because that gives me two skill tokens yeah right plus the 10 for the Okay, so that shield's taking a beating. Next up, the horribly powerful blue guy activates. He is blinded or whatever. Can only hope that that will save us. Yeah, he's distracted. Minus three to attack rolls against enemies. Great. All right, he's trying to target the farthest enemy <clears throat> that he can reach. Yeah, moving him kind of screwed that up a little bit, actually. But, oh, well. So... He's got a range of two. He's got a range of two. I would just as soon have him attack Nyx. So he's going to take the shortest path first. Yeah, so he can do it just like that. One, two, three, four. Targeting her. He takes reaction damage from Herodotus, equaling eight. Taking him down to 81. Man, that guy is a monster. Wow. 
Rapid Mist, range of two, 17 damage plus effect, Echo 13, another hero closest and in eight of this target takes 13 damage. But God, at least she's not unprovoked. Disengage, no other villain is within one of the target. Take an extra turn, holy shit. Ruthless motherfucker. Um, and it's attacking Nyx. And I don't think I have anything that I can do about that because I don't have any goddamn mana cubes. Oh, thank God. <laughs> it rolled a three. So it misses. Um, woof. So it's still going to do its residual damage, which is 12, but I need to see if it's passive power triggers. I don't believe it does, but it's been a couple days since I played, so. Uh, Yeah, just to hit the apply passive. So all that happens is Nyx takes 12 damage, which is the best possible outcome for this absolute monster. Nyx is down to 48 already, which ain't great. And that thing is taken care of. And now I feel like I need to focus fire that thing as much as possible. Because it really is dangerous. I'd rather have this guy be unprovoked and attack Herodotus than have that thing sitting on the board three more turns. All right, so let's activate. Yeah, we're going to activate the Bruiser. Trigger, at the start of your turn, there's at least one enemy within two of you. Yes, there is. An enemy within two of you takes five damage. So. Oh. And he. I believe he used one of his distractions. Okay. So he's down to 76. Every time to pull the big guns out, that is a really powerful enemy. Yeah, I am. I'm gonna do Flames of Justice on this fucking guy. I'm gonna move one. I'm going to do Flames of Justice. One square, one enemy, 20 damage plus effect. Effect permanent, you are blessed once per turn. Whenever you attack with blessed, if both of your rolls hit, you heal four. So blessed means you get to roll twice and keep the best result. If she hits on both of them, she gets to passively heal. Very powerful, very useful to get out early. Um, guy's got a defense of eight. There's no, there's nothing I can do to get advantage on him. So it's a little risky, but I got to just roll the eight. And I don't think I'm ready to throw the weapon behind it as well. Come on. 
baby. 16, all right. So she hits with the flames of justice. She does 20 more damage to that guy, taking him down to 56, which is still nowhere near killable, but she is now blessed forevermore. Very nice. That's it for her activation. And finally, we've got Nyx. Nyx is probably going to start doing some healing. We've already got some damage taken, particularly on Nyx. <laughs> oh, and unfortunately, um, yeah, and Ariel took the five damage for activating, taking her down to 60. All right. I think she's just going to do circle of healing, eight squares, one enemy, eight damage plus effect. The effect is heal three, two heroes. She's going to focus, bring his defense down to five. And she's going to trigger her short bow, try to do plus five damage. Twelve. Okay. So, she does eight damage. Bring him down to 48. Her passive triggers ally within three first hit of your turn deal plus five damage bringing him down to 40 She's healing three, two heroes. She is going to heal herself and the controller. Yami yeah, comes up to 58. Nyx, who, took, who also had to take the five damage for activating, um, means that she was down to 43. Because she's at 46. And now she is activated. So she's used to this. I forgot to flip her ability to worlds. Come on, Mr. All right. Oh, plus she did the extra five damage from her bow. Almost forgot to give her that. Taking him down to 38. I'm gonna check the condition, special rules again. Kill the specter before drooling, destroying Gulag's mana shield. I don't know what specter they're talking about. I'm assuming they're talking about this one that I'm attacking right now. Which, I don't know how you wouldn't kill that thing first. Oh, 
All right, so our Red Reaper activates, targeting the hero with the most hit points, which is now an Ariel. Perfect. He's gonna move. One, two, three. He's taking eight damage from Karatis. Taking him down to 27 damage already. And then he's attacking her. Powerful Psy. Needs seven or better. Taking an Ariel. Hits the 11 for the hit. Does 17 damage, plus he's unprovoked, so he does an additional five damage. He has no passive power or anything like that. Although he is, see, this is really confusing. Like, can you use more and more of those a turn? Tokens last until their effect is considered or applied. So I don't think this one technically would have been considered or applied because she missed naturally. God damn, <laughs> I don't just need another vision token. Yeah. But in this case, He rolled what, an 11? So if you take three away from that, yeah, I think if, I think he would use two of those and that would mean that the attack missed and then the one remains. So all he does is actually his residual damage, which is just eight. If that's not how you do that, let me know in the comments. And now he's activated, which means everybody is activated means we just slide right into the next round and away we go okay so what I want is a way to do a bunch of damage to blue without actually directly attacking him so that I can weaken him and get him to a potential kill spot he's at 38 right now Who has multi-target? Yeah, deal six to an enemy you are hastened. So she's got, she's got an option. Eight squares, one enemy, seven damage plus effect. She deals six damage to another enemy. It's gonna trigger big red again, but he's not gonna go after her. He's gonna go after whoever has the most hit points, which, at that point, will probably be Yemi. Which I'm okay with. Yeah, so Nyx is gonna activate. She goes down to 41 because of the five damage. She's gonna focus and cast Pew Pew on Big Red. Bringing his, yeah, bringing his defense down to two. So she's not gonna apply the benefit. She rolls a five, so she hits. Passive ally within three, you first hit your turn, deal five damage, so she deals five plus seven 
12 damage to red. <clears throat> Taking him down to 15. Plus she deals six damage to blue. Taking him down 32. And she is hastened. She really kind of doesn't do anything, but not for me. Okay, now red activates because he's been provoked. First thing he does is, again, he's trying to target the hero with the most hit points. Currently, the hero with the most hit points is Yemi. So, he's gonna move one, two, three. Triggering reaction from her to the tune of eight damage. Taking him down to seven total hit points remaining. And he's attacking Yemi. She's got a defense of six. I know that was high, too high for this to have made any difference. So he uses that up. Um, and gets the hit. So he did 17 damage to her, which is considerable. Yeah, it takes her all the way down to 41. But he doesn't get anything else out of it, and he is on the brink, absolute brink of death. All right. Now, how do I kill both of them? How do I kill both of them? Nine damage plus effect. Another enemy takes damage equal to half your natural roll. That could do it. Yeah, why not? Let's do Fatal Kiss with... Yemi. She'll have to spend her movement sidestepping. Actually, that will do her no good. <laughs> um, shit. Do I rethink? It's a ranged attack, so she'll trigger that counterattack if she does that. What about her? Because she's got that brutal... Yeah, her passive will almost kill that red guy. Bone destruction. could sidestep, but she's already activated. What about Herodotus?
Yeah, Herodotus, I think. I think Herodotus is going to activate. So if he does that, then he won't get his... Passive. See, all sorts of crunchy decisions to make here. Anything that would really move. That counterattack. Hmm. Oh, but if he kills, if he at least kills. Hmm. Then that would give her a clear shot. Yeah. All right. Protest can activate. It's gonna move. It's gonna be within one. It's gonna move one, two, three, four. Targeting him with the shipwreck blow. One square, one enemy. Benefit, you move three in. Ten damage plus effect. Deal six damage to another enemy within two of you. Yeah, so he's going to attack. Guy, that guy is definitely mobbed, so he's down to two defense. Oh. <laughs> And he rolls a two. Okay. Well, that'll do it. He does 10, da 10 damage, killing him. And he does six splash damage to blue. Taking it down to 20... Six. See you later. Off the board. All right. Nothing else happens, right? Yeah, he doesn't get to take advantage of his trigger, but we're just gonna have to live with that. Next up. Who's this camera target? Farthest target. Hmm. If she could do enough damage to him. He's at 26. If she could do something close to 20 damage to him and provoke a move that kills him, that would be pretty cool. Herodotus forgot to take his five damage from the shield. He's down to 50. Yeah, eight squares, one enemy, Wheel of Fortune, benefit. Before striking, make two guesses about the roll. 13 or higher or 14, 13 or lower or 14 or higher and odd and even. It does 20 damage naturally. The effect is for each correct guess, a different enemy takes 10 damage. One problem is because of his range, he won't have to move. But it'll have to do a ranged attack. No, that doesn't count as a ranged attack. She has the potential to kill him with this, if I guess right. 
and it hits. And fuck it. All right. She's focused, bringing his defense down to five. No other means of altering fate. Ah! Oh. <laughs> Every time she missed, she gets the the fucking goose egg. Damn. Meaning all it does is the 15 residual damage, which is considerable. Taking him down to 11. But she burned one of her most powerful abilities and he gets to immediately activate with with basically no consequences and no way of stopping him. Right? Yep. It's the way the cookie crumbles. Shit. All right. Bad guy's up. He wants to target the one that's farthest away, which I guess I can choose between Nyx or Yemi. I'll choose Nyx. Her defense is a little bit higher. barely hits. I want to make sure this hastened, which I think has already gone away anyways. Didn't do anything. Man, that's pretty bad. Fuck. Alright. So he does 17 damage to Nyx. She's down to 24. He does Echo of 13, another hero closest, and in eight of this enemy takes 13 damage. Oh, she did have all these misses though. What did I say she rolled? A seven. Oh, fuck you, she missed. She used, this comes into play, and I think it would have come into play last turn too, so she only has one left on her, but one of those is enough to knock him down to, I guess maybe both of them. Uh, that's a little unclear to me. Either way, that's seven misses. So he actually doesn't do any damage. Well, he does his residual damage. But no echo and no extra turn. What's his residual? 12. her down to 29 instead. And none of that other evil shit. <sighs> that I can deal with. Finally, the Guardian activates. Start of your turn, at least one enemy within two of you. Enemy takes five. Brings him down to six. She takes five damage for activating the shield up. You're down to 47. <laughs> and now she just needs to hit, or really it doesn't matter, the residual damage on most of her attacks will kill this fucker. No, well, her residual damage is not that great, only five. Anything that can give me a bonus. Yeah, her basic. 
attack gives me a plus one to the roll. And it'll do eight damage, that's enough. That's what I need. She's gonna do a basic attack. And she is blessed, so she gets to roll twice. 17 hits. 16 hits, so she heals four from her special bonus. Bring her back up to 51. And she kills that fucking guy. This absolute nightmare <laughs> of an enemy. And that means all that remains to face us is the shield. She still has her move, so she'll just go one or two, three, and get ready to start beating the hell out of that shield. All right. Everybody activated their bonuses. And she activated. So that's it for the first couple of rounds. Fighting an insanely hard monster that I almost feel like is probably a misprint. Uh, but we did take him down. And that shield is, is pretty weak. So it's not going to take much to break that shield. Which is just going to move us into another room where we're going to have to face another shield. So <laughs> maybe that's not... So great, and maybe um, in the downtime between videos, I will <laughs> um, clarify this rule. If there are chemical lords on the grid, a hero takes fire damage. Also, I gotta remember the crystal deposit in the barrels. If I remove it, I get mana, and mana I can spend on skills to kill these things more quickly. So I definitely need somebody to do that at some point. And as a matter of fact, she would have had Five movement. So she, having been, I believe, here, could have gone one, two, to get up, three, four, five, giving everybody one mana. All right, so that is it for now. Hope you're enjoying this. Continuing coverage of Tanaris. It's definitely getting smoother, you know. I feel like I know the core rules pretty well. And the game, like, sings once you know the core rules. So, should be smooth sailing from here.